Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses us this evening, gives us more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past in order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Brethren, I think we've given Satan long enough to give us some proof of what is in these uh, other books. See, Satan has been done a great job of uh, demonizing other information, but providing absolutely no proof to substantiate these allegations. We're going to be getting into the transcendental book of magic and you're going to find out you know what's really in the book satan's done a great job of um keeping us from connecting back to our heritage making it seem as if our heritage is evil you're going to learn something today about the knights templar i'm sure many of you have heard and seen in movies and read about how they guarded a secret. And even, uh, what is it, Dan Brown's movie was talking about, you know, they were guarding the fact that, uh, you know, Jesus was married and he uh, had a lineage that still goes on to today. <clears throat> but we're going to give you some other information that probably sheds a little bit more light as to why the uh, priesthood of Mahan went ahead and um, demonized this group but before we do that i want us to pray together i want us to read psalms 9 and use this prayer together as a family so please go ahead and get your bibles out go ahead and go to psalms 9 and let's pray this prayer to our father together i will praise thee o lord with my whole heart, I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou saddest, saddest in the throne judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise. In the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. <clears throat> the heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, and the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higion, Selah. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. 
Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. And see, the Most High made them keep our traditions, our information in these books. And the things that you're going to see is that, yes, the Most High already give, gave us this knowledge, understanding in our spirit. But now is the time for him to also show you in this information that what he's been showing us in the spirit is true. And not only for us to see it, but also for the other nations. See, the other nations might not be getting these downloads spiritually. So they might have to see them written. They might have to make sense to them. And who is the Most High going to use to do that? He's going to use his people. The other nations don't have it in them to, sh to share the truth. All they, most of them are just going to try to just, um, you know, turn their heads away, ignore, you know, all the facts coming out. But the few that the Most High is calling, they're going to be presented with the facts. Now, you see people making, you know, comments and everything else about books that they don't even have. They're making comments about books they've never even read. That right there is a Gentile move. See, they've been able to, you know, do those kinds of things. Like we bring out all this information and what do they say? Oh, I don't accept that. Oh, I don't accept that. Those books. I don't accept your breakdown. I don't accept this. I don't accept that. Without really even delving in and without really even studying for themselves. So you can tell who the people are aligned with. Making accusations and things about, you know, information they have, they don't, they don't privy to even have. They've never even read. But like I said, that's a straight Gentile priest of Mahan move. The Knights Templar came across some information that terrified the abominable church. And the Knights Templar, I guess, was able to pretty much bribe the church for a time in order to get hush money to keep things secret <clears throat> in order for the church of Mahan to be able to continue, you know, in their position of power worldwide. But eventually, you know, we know the church turned on them. Talks about that in the movie of the Da Vinci Code. And they ended up, you know, killing a bunch of them. And like I said, in the movie, you know, they go off and talk about the bloodline of Yahushai or, or their Jesus. And that's how they go with that movie. But we're going to get into this book right here. I'll show you right now. Again, talking about the uh, Knights Templar. We're going to get into this book right here called Transcendental Magic. Now, you know, many just see the word magic and you already know how that's going to go. They're going to go with the definition that the church has given them. Which is good for us because you know what it is? The Most High just keeps people that, hey, this isn't for, keeps them away. If this isn't for you, you're not going to study. You're not going to try to get the information. You're going to just try to blow it off and continue on with your life, which is cool because that's when the Most High didn't want you to get this information in the first place. We've given people plenty of time to say, hey, prove what's in the book. Show us what's in the book. Show us what's so evil. See, the priest of Mahan doesn't want you to look into these books. Because it exposes them. They think, oh, it's a book on magic? Oh, it's going to teach you about witchcraft. Teach you about spells. Teach you how to do all these horrible and heinous things. Have you read the book? No. Do you have the book? No. Okay, but how do you know what's in it? I just know. How do you know? Because the devil told me so. And, you know, you don't question the devil. You don't question him because, you know, the devil would never lie to you, right? Like he's not lying to us every single day. Just like the video we did yesterday about the prophecies that are going on. They don't give you those breakdowns about them coming over here to the Americas. About how that fulfilled prophecy. And how the Most High is going to sweep them off the land. After their time of, of uh, afflicting the Most High's chosen people. Satan doesn't want you to realize that. So he tells you, don't worry about that. Don't, you don't need to read that. My priests will break it down for you. But now the Father's been here. Releasing the Holy Spirit. Rebuilding the third temple. And that's what we're going to be talking about right now. 
I'm going to read the top right here, okay? <clears throat> Did the Templars really adore Baphomet? Did they offer a shameful salutation to the buttocks of the goat of Mendes? Now, you know that's what's going to happen with these church. You know, they're going to make all these false allegations in order to justify the things that they do. So they're going to demonize the Knights Templar, just like they did with Yahawashai. They were demonizing him, just like they do with the, all of the followers of Yahawashai. They go out of their way to try to demonize them. No proof, just accusations. Okay? What was actually the secret and potent association which imperiled church and state and was thus destroyed unheard? So what is the secret that they had that threatened, you know, the church and the state of the abominable church? These guys knew something. It shows you how important information is. People think it's all about money, that that's important. Status, that that's important. It's this knowledge that's important. And this knowledge that they had threatened to bring down the entire establishment of Satan. The whole establishment of the priesthood of Mahan and their power structure. Judge nothing lightly. They are guilty of a great crime. They have exposed to profane eyes the sanctuary of antique initiation. They have gathered again and have shared the fruits of the tree of knowledge <clears throat> so that they might become masters of the world. And see, the ones who have this understanding are the ones that are going to be the masters of the world. I showed you how we were destroyed for lack of knowledge because when we had knowledge, we were running, running things. Once we lost that knowledge, we got, to, we got relegated to the tail. Okay? The judgment pronounced against them is higher and far older than the tribunal of a pope or king. On the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die, said God himself, as we re read in the book of Genesis. What then is taking place in the world? And why do priests and potentates tremble? What secret power threatens tiaras and crowns? A few Bedlamites are roaming from land to land, concealing, as they say, the philosophical stone under their ragged vesture. Now, let's stop right there and go up by number one, okay? It says, they have gathered again and have shared the fruits of the tree of knowledge so that they might become masters of the world. Now, that's number one. Let's see what they're talking about there at the bottom there, number one. The purport of, the, of this accusation does not transpire. See, however, my translation of Levi's History of Magic, 2nd edition, 1922, in the chapter on Knights Templar, with the speculations of which may be compared, okay? Right there, La Clef, Des Grands Mysteries, right there, page 359, 360, okay. Here we go. And here's as follows. The very name and attributes of masonry have reference to the rebuilding of the temple, that universal dream of Kabbalism. And here, Levi quotes a positive, uh, positively, a dictum referred to, okay, referred to a master. There is no true Israelite for whom the temple is not an edifice realizable immediately, for he rebuilds it in his heart. He goes on to suggest that the temple was therefore a social utopia and a symbol of perfect government founded on the democratic hierarchy of merit and intelligence. <clears throat> so, what do we have here? Doesn't sound like we have some hocus pocus magical spells going on here, but we have the real reason as to why they went after the Knights Templar. They knew that the third temple has nothing to do with a physical building, but it has to do with the Israelites, and how they can, what does it say right there? There is no true Israelite for whom the temple is not an edifice realizable immediately, for he rebuilds it in his heart. So, the ones who have this connection with the Most High is not just anybody who goes to the Christian or Catholic church. It isn't anyone who just says, hey, Jesus, it's a specific bloodline of people and these people can be called back to the most high at any time 
So your whole foundations of all of your Catholic Christian churches, all of your uh, breakdowns of prophecy, your left behind prophecy of the third temple being built and after you get raptured away and the Antichrist comes and, um, you know, desecrates the third temple and all that BS, it's shown that that was already, they already knew that stuff was not true. This is showing you that everything revolves around who again? The Israelites, not the church, not the priest of Mahan church. These are the kinds of things that are in these books. Confirmation that we already knew, just like we talked about a couple days ago, about when did we start getting awakened? When was the Holy Spirit released? How, is, like, how many of us have gotten into this truth around the same time? Many of us have came in, come into this truth under many of the same circumstances. This information confirms what we've been seeing for the last few years. These are the things in these books that they don't want you to see. Why would they be talking about Israelites in a book of magic? Why would they be admitting things like, there is no true Israelite for whom the temple is not an edifice realizable immediately, for he rebuilds it in his heart? Why would that be in a book like this? Better question, why would someone make all these accusations about a book to keep you out of it when they haven't even read it themselves? Because all this has been about is keeping you in ignorance. It's all been about you not actually studying for yourself and you taking man's word, you know, as being golden. And that's okay. If you're one of the lazy ones who doesn't want to study for yourself, then so be it. This is just the tip of the iceberg of what's in this book. And it's just going to confirm what the Spirit has already shown us. The Father has already been rebuilding the temple. He's been rebuilding the temple right under the heathen's nose. That's why these people... It's very, you know, they have to be very careful who they try to proselytize, who they try to talk to, because they're going to run up on some Hebrews that actually know something. And they're going to shut them down, and then they're going to hurt their feelings because they thought they knew something because they were being taught by these abominable churches, and they're going to realize you came up to, you came against the wrong ones. We know way too much. The Most High has blessed us with so much knowledge. He said we can destroy those, you know, your little thoughts real quick. And these books just confirm what's already been shown to us in the spirit. Again, Transcendental Magic, that's the name of this book. Why would it be talking about this? Why would it be talking about the real reasons as to why, you know, the Abominable Church went after the, the Knights Templar? You read that again. There is no true Israelite for whom the temple is not an edifice realizable immediately for he rebuilds it in his heart he goes on to suggest that the temple was therefore a social utopia and a symbol of perfect government founded on the democratic hierarchy of merit and intelligence <clears throat> now remember and some of the other books i had on magic by defoe many of the actual people who were put in positions of power were very smart, intelligent people. Anytime, and those were a lot of times were Israelites. They were raised up. Joseph was raised up to be second in command because he uh, interpreted the dream, you know, of the Pharaoh. Daniel was raised up because he can interpret the dreams, because he was very intelligent, because he had the spirit of the Most High, and the other people knew it. Enoch was raised up. People wanted him to rule over them because of the fact of his knowledge and his connection with the Most High. Solomon was raised up. David was raised up. It goes back to what? Uh, democratic hierarchy of merit and intelligence. They don't want you to realize that your leaders are going to be the Israelites who have a connection with the Most High. And that, that whole third temple 
thinking is like a social construct of how things are going to be. It's not all about a physical building. There's always like a spiritual understanding that underlines, you know, many of the things that you see in the Bible. But the other nations and the, you know, and these churches, they're only going to show you pretty much the physical aspect. Oh, the third temple? Oh, that's, that's a building. Oh, that's going to be rebuilt as, as a building. Oh, it has nothing to do with the spirit. It has nothing to do with the Israelites. It has to do with Ish and the land that we made up over there in the so-called Middle East. So don't worry about anything that's happening right now because they haven't even built the third temple yet. So don't worry about it. Prophecy is not being fulfilled. Don't worry about it. All the while, the Most High is raising up his people right under your noses. The Most High has put the spirit in his people to show you the truth before he cracks the skies open. Because once he cracks those skies open, all the tribes of the earth are going to be mourning because they're going to realize that they've been lied to. So always look at people, you know, a little sideways when they're making all these accusations and they don't even have the books. They haven't even read the information. They have no idea what's in there. You would have never, if you would have listened to other people talking about these books on magic, you would have never realized that they were admitting how special the Israelites are. How they have a connection with the Most High. And how they can realize the third temple at any time. Because when we get awakened and the Holy Spirit comes back to us, that's the whole process of rebuilding the third temple, which is exactly what you've been seeing over these last few years. And you're seeing the culmination of it now. So keep on running your mouth about books you don't even have. That just shows you that that's a Satan move. That's a Church of Mahan move. That's what they've all done. Have they not? Don't look at that. Don't look at this. Don't read this. Don't read that. Have we not had that as, as long as we've been in the church? But when you actually have the spirit and she starts to guide you, you'll be amazed at what you're going to find. Now, I'm going to read the bottom part. Check this out because it shows you the attributes of these Israelites. Okay? <clears throat> what secret power threatens tiaras and crowns? We already know what secret power that is. The Israelites. That's that secret power that threatens tiaras and crowns. Remember when the chosen people, right, came over and were given the lands of Canaan back. They had their crowns. They had their tiaras and everything else. But when the Most High said, that's it, you take your land back. That's exactly what happened, right? When you're, when the Most that threatens tiaras and crowns. When Joshua was given the order to go and take those lands back because, you know, these lands are yours. That's what threatens tiaras and crowns. And they know this. When the Most High turns his face back to his people. That's what threatens the world. That's why they've been confederate against the Most High's chosen people this entire time. So, again, what secret uh, what secret power threatens tiaras and crowns? Oh, it was the bloodline of Jesus like in Dan Brown's movie, The Da Vinci Code. You think that's what they were worried about? No. They're worried about the Israelites. But it was a good movie, though. But that's not what was going on right here. <clears throat> Check it out. A few Bedlamites are roaming from land to land, concealing, as they say, the philosophical stone under their ragged vesture. We might not look like much. We might not look like a, you know, a great people. But what's underneath this, you know, outward exterior is the spirit of kings, queens, priests. The true kings, kings, and priests that are actually under the power of the Most High. So on the outside, hey, we don't look like much. But on the inside, they know exactly what's what's there. So it says they, the next page here, can change earth into gold. And they are without food or lodging. So our people are the ones can change the earth into gold. We can make this place a paradise. When the righteous are ruling, that's when the whole world is going to be happy. 
is going to be rejoicing because we are the ones that can change the earth into gold. Because And they are without food or lodging. Right now, hey, we've been at the bottom. We've been going through our curses. So they know that there's a secret power inside of us. But we've been going through the curses. This is what this is letting you know. This is what's in this book of magic. When you have the eyes to see, you know exactly what they're talking about. Their brows are encircled by an aureole of glory and by a shadow of ignominy or shame or disgrace. That's what that means. So they know that we got these halos around us. They know that we are the star seeds. But they know in this earth, we walk around under shame and disgrace. Pretty amazing what's in this book when you actually read it and don't take a man's opinion about the book. It's telling your story. It's telling how great of a people you are. Just like any book, you have to chew out the meat, chew the meat and spit out the bones. But when you already know the whole skeletal breakdown of the story, when you start to read things, you start to see your story in so many different places. Remember, um, we talked about before, once you have that correct thought in your mind, put in your mind by the most high, you can see your story everywhere. And the priesthood of Mahan knows that. So therefore, they can't stop you from, you know, actually getting the correct understanding. If you actually read something, you go get the correct understanding. They can't stop that. But what they do, do, they do try to do is keep you from even starting to read this information. Stop you from even looking in these books. You're going to be surprised when I know some of you guys are going to look to find, try to find this book. And you're going to be surprised at how expensive this book is. You'll see, and you'll wonder why. Why is this book so expensive? It's just going to teach me some, some evil spells. It's just going to teach me how to talk to Satan. <laughs> if that, why, would that, I mean, why would they make that so expensive? If that's all that it is. You know, you don't really need a book to talk to Satan. All you need to do is go to church. You talk to Satan all day. You don't need, you don't need a book. They do spells every single, every single Sunday. Say this to your neighbor. Hold his hand. Repeat after me. You don't think those are spells? Those are, but those are good spells because those are spells that actually support uh, the abominable church. So they want you definitely doing those ones on the ley lines. They want you to you know, do those spells to bless them and to empower their demons. They just don't want you to actually figure out that, hey, you have angels that are sitting here waiting for you to return back to the Most High so he can release those angels on the other nations. The rebuilding of the temple has already been going on. We already know it. We already see it. And the effects of this rebuilding of the temple is now being affected, is being shown worldwide, as you're seeing the collapse of every single country worldwide. Why is that? Because the third temple has already been in a process of being rebuilt. We've already been being called home by the Father. He sent the mother, the Holy Spirit, to get us ready for the return of the Father. The abominable church has done a great job keeping everyone ignorant and keeping everyone out of the books that actually has your stories all over the place. But that's not going to continue any longer because their power is done. Just like always, A, whoever wins the war gets to write the history. These people weren't, the Knights Templar were not able to write their own history, not to be able to explain their side of the story. Just like us Israelites, A, you know, we don't have a history according to everyone else. Our history started with slavery. So if you want to believe that because you believe that the church is telling you the truth about everything, so be it. But for us over here, we're going to continue to chase the Most High wherever He leads us. All praise is the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement of the Earthly Mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.